whatever you think I'm capable of, I am your ally. I am on this ship. And I will only ever use any of my skills to progress forward whatever mission we're going to do. I'm not in the business of betrayal. I am simply making sure that I always have collateral in case anybody betrays me. So if I can trust you, then I can trust you. If I can't, then I can't. But I want to be very clear that you have your skills and I have my skills and they're useful. I'm not saying your skills aren't useful. I just... I am in the business where betrayal can come very quickly and from sources you least expect. And I've seen many things. We will have no quarrel as long as you keep your word that we are allies or at least acquaintances. I swear it on my mother's name. Can I do an insight check on that? Go for it. And while we're doing that, Anima, Bal, what are y'all doing while this conversation is going on? <laughs> Bal's just listening to their conversation. Still trying to play like kind of like a mediator, so just kind of just listening, just trying to you know make sure things don't go too crazy. So keep an eye out for any vocal triggers that you might need to uh, make sure your friend does not spring a leak. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. 27. I'm I'm also like a little bit if I need to like <laughs> suddenly grab by, I'm like trying to be ready for that. <laughs> there is so much tension in this room. It's just like Bell and Anna just playing mediators okay. over okay. here. Okay. 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 <laughs> so we we have the two Super suspicious, sneaky people, and then they're two himbo bodyguards. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we have definitely established a himbo's a himbo. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's huh. true. Okay. I got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is. Okay. I got a 27. What does she get with a 27? One Stabby House is not lying. And you would get the sense that there is a lot of gravity and weight around the idea of swearing on their mother's name specifically. Okay, okay. So this is a promise that they intend to keep. And yes. Because, okay, their mother is important to them. Okay. Yeah. You also know they absolutely hate their father. Yes. From Black yes. Session. You know, know that, that they mm-hmm. do not like him. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, simplified conversation that just took place. What I'm hearing, friends good, betrayers bad. Let's be friends and not betrayers. Sounds yeah? good to me. Incredible. Sounds very good. All right. Yes. And Vi sort of relaxes a little bit. She's almost never fully relaxed, but... Rightfully so. Is from less imminent murder mode. <laughs> For now. So you see Spectre finally hands the tablet back to Maria when she walks over and looks at Bell and Stavius. So do you have any questions for me and for the rest of my crew? When do we leave? She looks at Bell. Not, not that I can think of, no. Can I ask later if I do think of something? Of course. We like to keep an open door policy and she mental missives via Anima. So, what do you think? She does it to each separately, because I don't think you can do one to two people. Give them a chance or no? Anima says, They seem sincere, but we might need to keep Stavias and Vi away from each other for a little bit. <laughs> Get them used to each other first. <laughs> Why is there like cats? Like two, Get- like two cats. You just yeah. gotta stick one of us yeah. in the bathroom and one of us in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there's a response that goes on to where we're going to be assigning them specific rooms on a different part of the floor. Also, Vi is not going to have access to those rooms. Well, no, it's going to be monitoring. Vi, <laughs> what do you say? 
skill-wise, they do have... They're definitely capable. It was very alarming that Stavias knew about Ferda, but it is good to know that they were probably got it from my mind and not... Yeah, my mind, probably, because I did feel some sort of... something happen when we first met. But knowing that they, they do seem very sincere in not wanting to share that information if they do not feel they have a reason to. And that is very good. I just... And at that point, Vi sort of takes a pause. I think we both know how information in the wrong hands can lead to very bad things. And I don't want that to happen, which was why I had to see if they were going to be a threat. I don't think they are a current threat now. Understandable. Though they will take some getting used to. <laughs> That's for sure. It'll be amusing if they ever try and use that collateral to see how much that comes to bite them in the ass. The lack of faith that everyone has in Stavios right now so palpable. Hey, not Belle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the person who was gonna deal with it probably the fastest, you took off the edge of the cliff. They're now a few feet away from the cliff, which is their normal place. It's fine. Yeah, and Spectra continues, and there's no worry about them exchanging information without us noticing. They'll set to Please passively monitor all communications. She'll recognize if there's anything we need to worry about. Okay. So yeah, let's give them a chance. But Ostavias, neither of y'all heard that. You just saw, like, Spectre staring at them both. <laughs> you probably <laughs> recognized that it was a mental conversation going on. I tell Val that it's a mental conversation, probably. <laughs> oh... I thought they're just kind of looking at each other. Yeah. So do we hear that? Do we hear Stavias say that to Bal since we're like next to them? Stavias, do you say that out loud or do you do mental missive it to Bal? I don't think I have. Do I have mental missive? Mental missive is fun. <laughs> I don't think I have. It is. So you just said that out loud? Yeah. I, well, I whispered it. I whispered it as low as I could. Roll stealth. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Actually, I think my stealth is okay. Twelve? Bye, you hear that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to make you roll because I don't think you were actively listening, so it would be your passive, which... Okay. Then Vi would like to mental missive both Stavias and Baal separately and be like, yes, it's a, ve- it's a very useful skill to have when you're trying to be bit more discreet how does that feel does that like is that just like i mean it's not a feeling so we just hear like the voice like is there any kind of echo or just like street just by his voice because i don't think bell's ever like experienced something like that before i lean over to bell again and i'm like it definitely is a mental conversation <laughs> <laughs> the way i picture it is almost you can hear them talking next to you but you know it's just in her head kind of thing yeah, because you can see us, and Vi's lips aren't moving. So it's it's something else. I just picture it's like giving, like sending like a really like snarky look. Did you say that? I mean, she wasn't doing that as a jab, so maybe more of like a pointed look. Yeah, or amused. Can we do this back, or is it like is the mental message just one yeah. way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can respond. You see her go like, uh, testing? Testing, is this... Am I... Is, am I... Is this doing any... Am I... Hmm. <laughs> yes, you're doing it correctly. <laughs> My response, yes, you're doing it correctly. I just respond, indeed. And then give Vi a smile. Vi doesn't give a full smile, but she does, like, sort of quirk her lips up. You are not her enemy, Right now, she has determined that, which is good. <laughs> All right. You are not closer, a threat. One step closer to being best friends. 
definitely one, not one step farther away, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think if you went any farther, you might actually get stabbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was... Yeah, Spectra has also already made sure that Nell will not allow Vi to do anything with the airlocks. She's not allowed to open that. But, okay, I would like to point out that Vi was 70 to 75% joking. <laughs> Maybe 60 on a bad day. Still, she remembered probably restrict your um, airlock access. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She's just like, well, just in case if things get too dicey, you definitely can't fit them in the incinerator. I mean, technically, that just requires smaller pieces, but yeah. And not come through no, my scales. Nell would oh, have Lord. enacted security measures long before it got to the point where you got to tell me where okay, they that's fit fair. the incinerator. <laughs> that's fair. I do not gundone trying to kill fellow player characters. No, I don't either. Just Vi is very... It is valid that Vi has complicated it, contemplated it, but please do not actually kill. Yeah, no plans on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Spectre just says, very well. Still have a couple more things to take care of on the ship before it's ready to go. I also imagine some you may need to gather your belongings, so we leave in an hour. I got everything. Don't you have to say goodbye to your friend? Wait, to friends? I mean, Savius is coming. Who are you referring to? What? Well, Miss Yellow. Oh, yes. Yes, actually, yeah. That's a good point. Dandelion. I'll know of her, if that's what you were worried about. We met with her and her... Oh, yeah, yeah. Associate? Boss? I'm, I'm not sure she's really his subordinate, but... I believe she's his second in command. He's grooming her to take over the Enterprise. I would like to go talk to Dandelion. All right. So what, what is everyone else doing? Bye, Anima, what are y'all gonna do? Sash and Sage are still somewhere in there. The two Valda, they have not showed up at all. They're still on the ship? No, they've been hanging out in their own wing, just kind of, like, reconnecting. Okay. Yeah, we have a couple of passengers currently that we need to... We rescued them from bad situations. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we need to let them know that we're leaving soon, unless... Uh, did you already do that, Spectra? I've been able to arrange for them to be taken aboard one of my brother's ships to start working for him so they can gain full and more protected employment that's a little safer and better for everyone's health. So we should be meeting with them soon. Either, actually, I think he's going to try and see if he can send a ship here to pick them up. Okay. Tashi did seemed very excited about the possibilities, and she did look him up when she thought she was on one of his ships. And she's just happy to have her sister back, so... But she is. I think they'll be alright, considering what they've been through. Also, I believe... Maria, did you say you were leaving? Maria steps forward. Yes. I'm going to stay behind here and help clean up some of the mess that was left by Trigger disappearing. Also found some other jobs I can help with to help me find more leads on my ship. Of course, I will be keeping in contact. You are such lovely people looking at Vi and Anima. <laughs> and perhaps I will rejoin sometime in the future, but I've... My services are best he used here. But do let us know if you find Trigger again. I think we'd all like to have a meeting with him. Oh, certainly. He'll be my first contact. Just don't tell anyone I said that. Ta-ta, and if you need anything, you know how to reach me. And she just gives a polite wave and walks out of the room. I'll probably see her again. I'll probably say goodbye to Dandelion for uh, heading aboard. Yeah, just so I'm guessing will you go with Stavios to... Yeah, I'll go with Stavios. Actually, no, I'm going to have that later. Never mind. I thought I felt a tug. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> it was Tali about me and you. She's like, oh, sorry. I've had, like, a lot of coffee today. And Ty's just like, you've had way too much caffeine. 
He's like putting her, his hand on her shoulders again to get her to stop bouncing. I mean, you could run down the stairs, I guess, and up the stairs to back to the... Oh, I did that a couple of times. It didn't really help. <laughs> I just figure if I just kind of keep moving and keep moving and keep moving, it'll all kind of burn off eventually. Any chance we could get Lex to somehow get that energy from her and use it to power the ship? Or... No, but he's working on a solution for that. And she says that she's dead serious. He is actually working on finding a way. Fair enough. <laughs> Install a hamster wheel, hop her up on some <laughs> caffeine, and just get her going. Oh, yes, you haven't met Lex yet. He is... I guess he'd be considered the, the chief engineer, correct? Yeah, he's a chief engineer. I was just taking care of engineering while we tried to figure out which company he was working for. He kind of floats around a lot whenever we're not around. Sometimes we lend him out, but he, I don't know, he just likes hanging out. I think it's because of Nell. He's never, there aren't many AI like her. I think that's what's got him so fascinated with our ship. Mm. That, and we don't make him leave engineering if he doesn't want to. Does that mean that there's a something in the mess hall that goes directly to engineering? Surely he'd need food at some point. Or is it just he keeps his own hours? We have a delivery system set up and he's got his own food stores. Sometimes he'll come out and join us. It's a unique ship. You, there are... Yeah. Spectre won't let anyone see the blueprints, which is driving me nuts. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Is Drew and Daria still going to be with us? Yes, they are. I believe they are content to stay with us for some time until they find some other cause to pursue. Also, they're still catching up. I don't know if they've found where they left off yet. Oh boy. Drew and Daria is also on our ship. She, uh, sorry, they are. Uh, Belair, that we helped. They were, I guess, what is it called? A dormant? A sort of hibernation stasis? Yes, and I believe both of you probably know that- actually know Rolor. I don't know if this would be, like, super common knowledge. Oh, well. You. Nope. That's a nine. That is a sixteen lore for me. Nine. Gotcha. So, Val, you've never he heard of Belair going dormant. Stalvios, you do know a lot of Belair get their energy and life force from the Crucible. So, theoretically, like, if they were far away from it and could not connect with it, they may lose energy and have to go into a dormant state. But it's not a common thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that can take some time. I relay that information to Val. Well, I love hearing about all these good things you guys are doing. Seriously, that's really awesome. I definitely chose the right uh, crew to, to join. Everyone go in their separate ways now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see you aboard the ship. Which is still parked on top of the palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember where that, or the pad was. I was like, is that the bottom? No, it's not at the bottom. <laughs> it's like... It's at the top. Oh, it's one of the fronds. Yeah. That is rather restricted. I don't know if Balanch and Obvious have ever been able to park up there before. Are we on the ship, or are we going to see Dandelion? Yeah, because I thought we were going to see um, Dandelion before we... No, you're going to see Dandelion. I was just trying to remember where we left the ship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ship? <laughs> Suddenly, wait, wait a second. It's like, no, that's a different story arc. Oh, no. I'm kidding. We're never gonna leave this planet. Nah, I've got planets on other planets. Mm hmm I have stuff planned everywhere. And by plan, I mean plan. With air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bal and Stavios, you go and you find Miss Yellow in her office. And she's like, Oh, are y'all doing all right? How did everything go? Uh, we are about to head out. We just wanted... Well, 
I came here for two reasons. One, I wanted to say goodbye and I wanted to give you another hug and then I go and I just kind of hug her. I don't really wait for her permission or anything. <laughs> I just give her, I just wrap her up in a big old hug. She hugs you back. She's used to this. <laughs> also, today she looks like an Eldori. Oh, okay, cool. This is just a thing with her. <laughs> <laughs> And then I get a little bit more serious, and I say, when we were talking about this job that you've obvious that you've given us, and I and we appreciate it, and it's great. I realized that we, I didn't really ask you anything about it, and I trust the people that we're going to be traveling with. They've proven at least a little bit that they can be trusted, if even if they are just a, a tad a, overly cautious. Because, well, <laughs> someone gave them reason to be, so... <laughs> be fair. I just wanted to ask your opinion of the Opal Star before we headed out. Well, the Opal Star's been in business for some time now. They're known for coming to the rescue whenever people need help. I do know quite recently when dealing with Seinfrith, which is how they became aware of him, they were trying to help a friend, and they discovered he was going to take some vital me- medicine needed for a the colony to turn it into a very dangerous party drug. So while they don't know these t- the two newest crew members, they're certainly good people. And they've also earned the respect of my employer, which is not something he gives out very lightly. And they have earned his favor. See, stuff as I told you. Seems like we got on a pretty good ship. They helped protect something that was very important. And helped remove a rather large threat. Okay. I won't dig, because I don't think there's any point in doing that. But, I guess, do you think that we will be successful with the Opal Star? Given what you know of us, and what you know of them? Well, they certainly are a unique group of people, that's for certain, but I do think you will do good things. It's possibly the best trip you could have gone accepted onto on this entire planet. Alright, that's good enough for me. I give her another hug. <laughs> Plus, Spectral Emma really is uniquely talented for getting out of trouble, and that name comes with a fair amount of connections. That's what I like to hear. Did you make a connection with her last name at all yet? Dandelion's last name or Spectra's last name? No, 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 no. I think I rolled for it and then I, and then I failed, so I wasn't able to. I could roll again. Yes, I say. Would you like to try again? Yeah. This time it's a seventeen. Am I correct in saying you've been kind of paying attention to what information you can get about the diplomats and ambassadors working on the negotiations with the Laurenti Imperium? Yeah. You recognize their last name because one of the top negotiators doing the trade arrangements? Their last name is Lamorelli. And with that, also with that role, I think you get that her first name is Elise. Okay. Cool, so I look at Dandelion, and then I say, one last request, and then we'll go. I mean, after Bal says, Bal says his goodbyes, of course. Can you let my f- friends know who I'm traveling with? Certainly. Oh, by the way, do you have a response? Do you want me to have delivered? Oh, what did they send me? Orig- what did they send me? They sent you a handwritten letter. Oh, what is it? Do you... Everyone but she unmute yourself real quick. Mute or deafen? Deafen. So, I will say you've already had a chance to read the letter at some point in all of the shenanigans. It's basically just letting you know things are continuing to go well. They are following the negotiations. I think things are continuing to improve. It's still going to be some time, they believe, especially since apparently there was a splinter group that tried to make a deal with an arms dealer. But something went wrong with that, so Star is hoping that won't impact the proceedings. Okay. 
And then there's just other just stuff about things going on in their life and questions about you and have you found any new jobs and how are you doing and do you still have the giant lizard bodyguard? <laughs> okay. I do have a response, and I say... First, I say, we do have a new job. I'm still working with Bal, and our new job has potentially given us a very, very close connection to one of the negotiators of the Lorendi trade agreements that are happening, which is a big deal, especially just for me and my career path, and just for everything that I'm trying to do on this side of, you know, the galaxy. And then I just tell them things are going much better than I thought they would. And that every day I miss them more and more. And wow. that's, yeah, that's about all I send. Yeah. And then you address it to Star. Okay, cool. That is it for me. All right, so... Stavios writes a quick letter. Well, I'm going to say Stavios, you're doing that while Bal is saying his goodbye. This is a short goodbye. Bal, this is kind of a normal thing. Used to it. Be asking if it's just a quick goodbye. Like, well, I guess we'll see you next time. Hopefully, that won't be um, very long, but I guess you can find your way to messages anyway, so. And hopefully, under better circumstances. And let's not pretend we're not going to keep in touch. I was going to say. Certainly, darling, certainly. Quick question. Does Dandelion know what clan you're from, Bal? From Bal, I will hide it from her. So, yeah. Yeah, they never know, because... Gotcha. So she's like, Oh, I don't know if you've noticed, they do have a stone fang on board, but from what I can tell, he's a good bloke. Yeah. He's different from most of them. I guess you could say the same about me, though, where I am right now, so... Who might I judge? Now Snowfang should behave. That's true, but... Yeah. But I know. I just hope he doesn't know much about me, so... But I guess we'll see. But it's good to know that he's a, he's a good... He's, he's good, though. That actually is really good to know. Yes, and if any problems crop up with that, just let me know. I'll see what I can do to help, because I know... Family drama for the mad guy can get... Rather messy when it's clan names involved. Yeah, you know, we'll see. I think I think we'll be okay, but we'll see how that's gonna go. I guess you'll be living soon. Is there anything I can do for you before you leave? No, no. I, I'm good. I think. I hand her the letter, and she takes it and says, "I'll get this on its way soon. You better go get ready. You don't want to be late for your first day in your new job." How come I never get letters? Hmm. That's because most people in the Alliance don't communicate via snail mail. Oh, well, I meant from Savias. I was, like, throwing, like, light shade, like, <laughs> I never get letters. You're always here. We're never that far apart. What, you want me to write you a letter and then just hand it to you, slip it under your door? I mean... Crumple it in a ball and toss it at him. <laughs> <laughs> You've been bunking, like, in the same room, usually. Or, like, one of you sleeps in the tiny bed, the other sleeps on the floor. You haven't been staying in very nice accommodations. I would still appreciate the thought, you know. It's the thought that counts, so... Val and Stavios are those toxic, codependent best friends. <laughs> 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 I love them so much, though. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that our relationship with Dandelion is, like, are we Dandelion's two bumbling dads? Because that's kind of how I feel about it. Basically, but she's the grown-ass woman who can absolutely take care of herself, mm -hmm. but is when very willing to help her two bumbling dads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. So I am... That's all I wanted to do, so we can head to the ship and everything. Are you sure you have everything, Savas? I know you have a lot of stuff to bring, so... Oh, trust me, after what we've gone through, I have everything prepared. Basically, all of your shuffed stuff and some of Cypress stuff is shoved in Val's bag. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't it's have the to pack, bag, you already so... packed. Yep, yeah, have everything. I mean, unless you want to, like, steal the extra shampoos. I stole his nice clothes. 
on top of taking back mm. my nice clothes. Yeah, um, double check the lining of his nice clothes, just in case there's any unwelcome surprises. I can't wait for him to come back, like, a year from now and be ready to, like, I'm gonna kill you guys! By that point, we're like, who are you? <laughs> if he's still alive, then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all that reading material, he's probably going to the clink for a long time. Yeah, the Alliance doesn't usually, like, imprison people, but yeah, he's... he's... Well, that's if it gets to the Alliance. I figured Sandro was gonna have words with him, and then after that, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, it was thanks to y'all robbing Steinfred and him being able to get the video that Sandro was able to know that you that certain people were alive that he thought was dead. Yeah. <laughs> so. Which domino effect? And now we're here. So, via an animal, what are you all doing? Because I, I don't know how much you have left to pack that you actually took off of the ship. Because also, I know y'all don't necessarily own a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I keeps it in a bag ready to go, <laughs> if she needs to. Yeah. You have it in a duffel bag by the door. Yeah. And we were told, like, we were going to leave in, like, half an hour. That's why we were when we were waiting in the bar. Question. Was Anima looking distracted during parts of the meeting? Maybe a little bit, but you feel like a lot of it was she was just kind of watching what was happening. Okay. Wait for things to pop off like Bell. Just casually watching a potential dumpster fire. (laughs) Potential murder take place. (laughs) Hoping she wouldn't have to intervene <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> but. Alright, then I think Vi would sort of pull her to the side for a minute, being like, I saw when I told you about my occupation earlier, you seem upset, almost uh, sad. Is there anything you want to talk about? Oh, we're gonna do this now? No, well. I imagine you're, like, in your room. Yeah, let's... You're in your private place. You're not in the bar. I don't think Vi would play you over in the bar. No, 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 she wouldn't. I was like, wait, (laughs) wait a minute. (laughs) I've been, like, a last check of... For things that they don't... So nothing gets left behind. Yeah. I mean... Okay. Let's put it this way. Maybe. How did you feel... When you heard what the Federation did to me. How they treated me. I was upset. I was unhappy. But I, well, honestly, I also didn't fully trust you at first. Just, it wasn't anything personal, but... That's alright. No, I understand. You have reasons to be suspicious about things. Yes. It makes me sad, I guess, that you didn't have... And I do want to make it clear that this isn't pity, you know? Because I... You don't seem like you would appreciate that. But it does just... It makes me upset that you were treated that way by the Federation. Where that was where you had to turn. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I know you. You're not a bad person, Vi. And I don't think that you would turn to murder for a living because you liked it. That that is true. And I don't... Yeah. And I would like to state that my, my mentor, he didn't force me into this. He gave it as an option, but he did advise that it's, it can be a very dangerous and lonely life. <sighs> there was no other option to get any answers that I needed, but even then I wasn't able to really get more information, but... Answers? You don't have to tell me. As I say, at that point, Vi sort of 
is surprised that she herself said that. <laughs> like, uh, oh. And I'm just saying, like, oh, are we gonna get backstory from V? Okay, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Yeah. I needed answers, and, well, let's just say they were... I'm not really sure why this... Let's just say there was an event that happened, and I don't know why that event happened. And the thing is that not even... You've met Farida's dad as well, right? You know, he was part of the security. He he also gathered information and did a lot of things about that. He right. even... I don't know if Anima directly met him, but Anima, you were definitely aware of him. May have been in the same room. Mm-mm. We went to dinner with them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Duh. I forgot about that. <laughs> you didn't meet him in the Federation yeah. personally, like, converse with him. There was probably a moment in that dinner where he's just like, oh, okay, that makes several things make a lot more sense about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that had to be an interesting conversation. Interesting family. Yes. <laughs> Even he, with all his power, was wanting a bit of the information from that event. And even he couldn't find it. I see. But I did want to let you know, I think you were the only one who who was on the ship besides Stavios and Bal, who will probably put the dots together at some point if they haven't already. But, I mean, I hope Farida doesn't actually think I'm a hacker. Unless she has very <laughs> odd ideas of what hackers do. <laughs> But it, yeah, I don't, I don't see myself as a bad person, and I do try to take jobs that aren't, I don't try to have innocent people hurt in my line of work, um, especially by the jobs I take, but just even saying that you're in that type of work can make people very upset, and so most of them don't know. I mean, it's not that my jewelry business is a cover, per se. I mean, it is, but I actually do it. It's not that it's it's just a means to an end, but what they don't know can't really hurt them, I guess. Because if, if they don't know about my actual occupation, then how much information can they really get or give to people? So that seems to be the best way to keep others safe, you know? Right. <laughs> what? Oh, I just... <laughs> I guess I just shouldn't have been surprised. I knew what they were like. Who, the Federation? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, knowing something in the abstract and realizing it from experience or from friend's experience can be very different. But I do know from experience in a way. That was my experience there too. It wasn't the same, obviously, but but I knew what they were like. I mean, I don't think every single person in the Federation is like that, but there's definitely powerful people like that and they don't seem to care. The people in charge. There was actually a time when I did kind of hate, was growing to hate at least everyone in the Federation. Thankfully my mentor put a stop to that. Pucked her down from that level of genocide. <laughs> yeah. Hm. Less, yeah. Which is very good because that level of say vengeance for lack of a better word is not yeah it can kill you just about as much as anyone else you hurt unless Casey has something she wants to add we can fade to black there I don't have anything so alright so we'll fade to black and montage through to when everyone is getting onto the ship cause it's time to leave 
Stop you off the bell. This is your first time seeing the Opal Star. It's definitely a custom designed ship. You see that the name comes from the stealth plating is almost opalescent. And since I finally decided what the emblem looks like for the Opal Star, there's like an emblem on the side that is a star being cradled by what looks like angel wings. This is so much nicer than our last job. I was gonna say it's probably the best ship we've been on this far. Ever. You could probably fit most of the ships you've been on inside of the Opal Star. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> takes me back. And then I walk in. I follow along. Tully gives you a tour of the ship. It's very much like the tour that Anima and Vi got. Minus the plot twist of Ty the Giant Lizard Man being hanging out in the anti-gravity chamber. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, because Tally did not know he was there and she tagalogged him in the anti-gravity chamber. It's a nice setup. You are assigned to rooms. I don't know if we've like laid out exactly where everyone's room is. I think Farrah's room is still technically reserved. But it doesn't exactly have her name on it. It's just locked. So, Stavios and Bell, you are assigned two rooms that are on the opposite side of where Vi and Anima are. <laughs> Fair enough. Are they right next to each other? Probably. You get a choice of if you want to be right next to each other or not. I feel like the answer's probably yes. I was gonna say it's gonna be. What's the closet situation like? Like, how big are the closets on the Opal Star? They're a pretty decently sized closet. There's, there's also, like, general coat closets dotted about. If you have stuff that won't quite fit, it'll definitely fit all the stuff that you stole, though. <laughs> Just asking, because otherwise I was going to be like, Val, I need your closet! <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Val, Val's had that much stuff, so that's fine. He wasn't going to fill this up anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably like big enough to walk in, but not big enough to where somebody could like sleep in the closet or something. It's it's a decently sized closet. You've got a desk space with a computer terminal that you can use to access all of the same libraries and databases you can access in the main library. You've got a bookshelf where you can bring out any books that you want to borrow from the library space because they. Well, yes, most of it's available digitally. It's also nice to have, like, actual physical books. Got a nice big bed. You can customize the designs on the walls to reflect different colors or patterns or anything. I can already imagine Stavios' room. <laughs> it's actually very... It's actually a very subdued, very specific night sky kind of design but almost when you walk in it almost feels like you're in a field on um the El El oh, let me see i forgot what my species Eldor. is called yeah on the eldori homeworld which is eldor <laughs> yeah it looks like a field on eldor basically that's awesome yeah it takes you a minute but you actually find the exact field you're looking for so cool i think the only thing that I would try and do is get a sense of what kind of books are in the library. Like, would there be any that would be very useful to me? Because I would want to start studying them pretty immediately, since we're going to be traveling and stuff. There's a wide variety of, like, history, science, technology, literature, philosophy. Is there anything about the Lorendi? There's probably a couple in there, as well as a corner of sci-fi manga. I was gonna say, are there any comics? Absolutely. Tali's got her own corner, and there's also, like, a shelf of comics in the game room. But I'll definitely need to snap a few of those and read through those for sure during the travel, so that's good to note. Tali's got a nice collection. Does she have, like, one copy that's just the normal reading and then one that's, like, behind glass that's, like, do not touch this? You gotta have your collector's one. Exactly. Those are, in, like, display cases. 
along the wall and dotting the wall, and she's probably got some better. I actually know her room's a hazard, so. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, uh, I don't know about her room. No one's actually seen her room, but. Hmm. You've met her, you can imagine yeah. the chaos. She may have her own room that's just for her collection, that's like right by. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. She she has the do not touch ones hidden somewhere. Spectre's probably the only person, only other person who actually knows where they are. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the most comfortable lodging y'all have experienced in some time. I lay down on my bed, having not even completely unpacked, and I am immediately out like a light. Because it's the first comfortable surface I've laid on in, like, like a month, like months, maybe even years. <laughs> you get comfortable logic whenever you go to visit Dandelion. But... Oh well, yeah. Well, that's Dandelion. This is like, this is like a stable lodging space that I get to stay in for more than a few days. This is my room. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else anyone wants to do before we the ship leaves Olimari and we? continue on to our next adventure that will happen next session, because I have to plan that. I'll just neatly put his clothes on the, uh, put their clothes on the I'm probably on, like, the desk or somewhere in there. On the extra clothes, so, yeah. That's what Bal's gonna do before he <laughs> goes to his room, so. Stop. Oh yeah, since it was all shoved in your bag. Mm-hmm. Stavios would be dead without Bal. Like, Stavios yeah. would have immediately <laughs> succumbed to diseases, would have been stabbed, <laughs> shot, maimed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why that's why Bal was hired originally. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, Bal, um, Ty does come to find you. He just kind of. Well, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to like. I'll try to like make sure. Like, so I'll try to make sure if I do know it's going to like a, like avoid like so like I'll be like asleep then. Or try to like you know appear asleep, or I'll just say I'm going to sleep. I think he actually shows up at your door as you're unpacking, just leaning on the door frame, just very casual. He's still like in his plain white tank top. Like, can I, can I help you? I'm just getting unpacked. I think he's just going to respond in. Whatever language Matakai speak, I don't remember what that's called. Matakai. Yeah, it's the same name. Cool. He replies and he says, "Just checking in, making sure you're getting settled in, all right, and wanting to confirm that you are indeed here to help." Heard stories, but I know sometimes stories are not all that they seem. I show my the rig like will things change so but yes I'm I'm here to help so but yeah like I said things things change maybe some things um you know we'll see I mean I don't, I'm nothing to really prove anymore I guess or maybe I do so one thing is for sure though I am here to help so that's but yeah so I love so I kind of show the rig because I assume everyone knows about him so he nods as you say this there are many people in my family who have been asking about the whereabouts and the affairs of a cousin of mine. You get that he's referring to you. Really now? Because Bob's not too smart, but I guess, yeah, he'd pick up on it, but he'd be like, oh, well, well, I mean, what surprise that they're asking, but... Hmm. You know what names can mean to people, but... Yeah, but in the end, they're just names, though, right? I mean... As long as you're true to your word and you stay for what's right, I'll stay out of that. I see no reason to get involved. Everyone has their own journey. Were you thinking about getting involved? Only if necessary, but I don't see it becoming necessary. Just wanted to allay any potential fears you may have. If you don't mind me asking, were you thinking of me before? I heard some whispers of one of our clan falling from the path. Yeah, I did. I'm not gonna lie. It has nothing to do with the with anyone else. That's just me, though. So, 
judge me if you want to, but I mean, I don't know, what everyone else is doing, that's I'm not a reflection of, of that, or just, I'm, I'm a reflection of Bal. I don't know, sometimes I feel like this clan stuff gets a little too, I don't know, maybe judgmental, I don't know, but like I said, all I can do is show basically what, what I, I don't know, I can't, like I said, I can't vouch for anyone else, I can only show you what I, what, how I am as a Madakai, no one else so, so whatever you feel about anyone else in the clan doesn't matter, I mean, just go with how, with how I am, I guess is what I'm trying to say. When you make the comment about the basically clan politics and stuff, you see him smirk a little bit, almost like he agrees. I think we'll get to be good friends. It's an honor having you aboard our ship. Thank you. It's an honor, honor to be here. I go in for like the stone thing, like handshake. I assume you have like a handshake thing, and I'll, I'll be gracious enough to do it. So whatever, yeah. like if you have like a specific like, handshake or whatever, whatever else Malachi do, maybe it's a tail tap. He returns the gesture in kind. As well, I will leave you to your unpacking. If you need anything, and he points to there's an intercom button. If you need anything, this is how you get a hold of people. Or just ask, no, she's always listening. And you hear, uh, keep your eyes voice time in. Indeed, I am. Well, that's kind of scary, but nice. But also scary. Take a little time to get AI. used to, but... AI takes some getting used to. But no is a good one. Also not standard. I'll probably say Bleach is talking to the AI. Because the Bow's never really a big experience one like that, so we probably just say Blade just asking them questions. Probably just getting to know the AI before falling to sleep. Yeah. Nell's friendly. There's some things that she won't be able to answer, but she's just like, this is nice. She runs and monitors a lot of systems, and she's also a combat AI, and she always knows where everyone is at all times. Even if she's not actively tracing them, just in case something bad happens, she will know where everyone is. We'll let, I'll probably let them know. Nothing bad about stuff. It's just like, you know, just be on the lookout. Just let me know if, if they need any help. So, you know, just... Certainly. Is this AI... Like, are we talking about Mass Effect 2 level ship AI? Or are we talking about... Yeah, ED, yeah. I mean, okay. after she got unlocked, and is no longer being puppeted by Cerberus. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. We got Cortana up in here. Nell is a good AI. Oh, I assume that Nell was a good AI. I was just like, what what level of AI are we talking about here? Especially knowing you, Bree, I'm like, okay, I think I know who this AI yeah. is based off of. <laughs> also, gonna say, most ship AIs do not have level of capabilities and control that Nell does. She is unique. Most, of, a lot of things about the Opal Star are unique. That's what happens when you let Spectre design things. I can't wait to gab with her. We're gonna gab and we're also gonna become best friends. I plan on becoming best friends with every single person in this ship, starting with, starting with Vi and then, and then going to Nell. No one's gonna, no one's <laughs> gonna match you, Bao. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Val might get jealous, like he never thought he would, so we'll see. That's gonna be interesting. Also, at this point, Sash and Sage were picked up by Spectre's Thunder. There was a little shuttle ARSE emblazoned on the side, and some kind of logo that also involves stars, because that's just the family thing, comes to pick them up, and they, before they leave, they stop and they run back, and they give, especially Vi and Anima, hugs. And Sash also makes sure to hug Spectra. It is very pleasant to hug Evolva, because they are very soft. Vi, anime, anything you want to do? Vi will start researching the book of the Shakespearean Nassive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. I am a contaminator goodness. It's going to take some time to make sense of it. Are you looking up stuff about it, or are you going to start reading it? I think I'm first going to see about how old it is, see if there's any sort of resources on 
words that may not have translated to more recent versions. See if there's anything in records about dialect, because I'm assuming it's not, it's older than like any, than 200 years since they lived to be that old. Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say you are able to find like resources to help you understand what the different words mean and translational differences. So that will help you just because all kinds of information is available to y'all that you are able to find out which will help you start to kind of translate it. And since we're getting close to a wrap up time, I will give you some of what you're able to read and translate from that in the next session. Okay. No problem. And Anima, what are you going to do? I don't have anything specifically I want to do or need to do. All right. At some point, you are all called up to the helm because Spectra is ready to do the jump and you all need to be in the helm for that. The call is loud enough to wake Stavios up. That's what I was going to ask. So am I going to be in my bed asleep during the jump? No, they, they make sure it's either either it wakes you up or someone will come back and like make sure you're awake because okay. otherwise... Bell would have made sure, so... I am so groggy walking into the helm being like, I'm disoriented. I was just woken up from a great nap. I almost had an image of um, Bal just sort of carrying like <laughs> Savias over his shoulder as Savias <laughs> is still waking up. It's happened a couple times. <laughs> just fireman carry. <Yeah. laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. So everyone gets strapped in and guys get to the two of you get to experience your first jump on the way to the new adventure and both of you roll me constitution saving throws oh i thought but i thought i, thought I said I've, uh, I've done it before a couple times or no you can have advantage Ooh, that's how do good. you feel about a 10 Ooh, i might fail you don't throw up but you get it does kind of make it queasy and the room's wobbling a little more Get a nine with an advantage. First of all, it's a one. Mm. So nine. So yeah, I'll we'll throw up a little bit. But I'll get a, I'll have a bag. Bags. I'll be smart about it, so. There's a bag to the left. Uh, you can you can kind of like s- stop yourself, but it's kind of a close thing. I'm breathing in and out of the bag. And so Spectre looks back and says, Oh, you handled that better than I thought you would. I'm great. I'm so good. There is a med bay if either of you need it. No, I'm fine. You're looking a little green. Why, why don't you go lay down? We're, we're not going to be doing that again for a while. Why don't you go lay down? I immediately go back to my room. And then I vomit in the back there. <laughs> a little walk. It also spend some time walking. Kind of just walk out till I kind of feel better, so... We will see what happens next time, because Spectre is about to find another adventure for everyone. Yeah! Because yay adventures! Life is not boring on the Opal Star. You have been listening to Aboard the Opal Star, an Esper Genesis 5e actual play podcast DM'd and produced by Brianna Jean as part of Pseudordam Social. A creative podcast network changing reality one story at a time. Filena is played by Alexis Workman. Anima is played by Casey Glover. Stavios is played by Shan Smith. Balamar is played by Blake Francis. And the theme music, as always, is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. If you don't want to wait to see what happens next, you can get early access to our episodes over at patreon.com slash social. If you like our show, please consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting app so people can know where to find us. We couldn't do this without your help. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.
Hey everybody, you want a new D&D 5th edition podcast to listen to? <laughs> well, I know I'm always looking for one, so guess what? I've got a recommendation for you. It's called Cheaper by the Dungeon. It's a Dungeons & Dragons campaign following the adventures of Zippy, Darian, and Norman D as they travel to become the greatest treasure hunters of all time. We've got some hardcore action. That's Five, 18 damage, 18 damage, four, 18 damage. Three! You come through with an 18 damage, you're swinging another a butt swing! Super, another swing, that's another seven, it's 17 damage! Two! 17 damage, seven, 17 damage! 17 damage! Comedy? Right. So, you wanna, you wanna bet on your friends? What do you wanna bet? Uh, their very lives, I think. As high as it goes. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm ready to win today. Okay. And even some dramatic moments. You have chosen the path you've sown. Now travel to the depths alone. And I, with Royce, I grab him and I throw him over the edge. But most of all, this show is filled to the brim with heart. And we hope that you come and join our adventure and become a cheapskate yourself. Catch Cheaper by the Dungeon anywhere you get your podcasts. Check us out. Love you. <laughs> All right, yeah, we did it. Oh, I've got to fight it. It's mine. Darian, Zippy, that was, that was so good. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm amazed. Yeah.